um, I submitted the report and basically this was kind of a rundown uh, both about what the what this committee does and what they don't do and then also uh, what what was done in the last couple of years after the presidential cycle uh, it's it we've got kind of a routine uh, the committee will go through review what process happened leading up to the convention and the campaign uh, and then uh, any any lessons learned we took a, a survey which Carrot, if he's, I hope he's here, will be able to, um, will be able to uh, present because of the results of that survey um, won't be surprising, but there, was, there were several similar comments across the board, uh, pro and con as to how things played out last time. Um, and if, if Carrot is not here, or, or if we need to um, make this more widely available, we can, we can post the results um, shortly to the list anyway. Um, we don't we can't foresee every type of issue that's going to arise in every election there's always going to be some weird thing that happens we had a guy that was uh, dedicating his campaign to jennifer lopez last time and was a stalker which we actually took him off our list but you know there's always something happening so there's no way to foresee this but we do try to do lessons learned and then and then coming out of that um we have notes from the committee we reviewed that we sent a survey we did adopt a few policies. We have a code of conduct for the ca candidates. It doesn't mean that they can't disagree or even heatedly disagree in debate, but it does mean that they can't uh, assault people. They can't, uh, let's see, they can disagree, complain, they can whistleblow, but they can't, they must behave in a civil manner. They can't sabotage others' campaigns, not stalking, no harassment or physical altercations. And uh, outside of civil disobedience, illegal activity is also another possibility that could result in the candidate being removed from our website. Um, uh, in 2021, we hosted a uh, debriefing, debriefing, which is where the survey came out of. And again, uh, uh, that went into all the lessons learned and that sort of thing. And that will be, um, that I think has been posted. Uh, we also had a few recommendations. Um, oh, we have a conflict of interest too. That also means that if a PCSC member decides to work on a campaign, whether paid or volunteer, openly, quietly, they step off the committee until after the nominating convention and that way, uh, you know, afterwards they can come back, but that way there's no conflict of interest on the committee. And by the way, this was adopted by a wide range of individuals who um, uh, stemming from issues that happened both uh, in the last campaign and prior to that. And so that we, we had a good, um, good consensus on that. A uh, few proposals to the national committee may be coming up. Uh, the bylaws that govern the presidential nominating process, some people would like to increase the number of signature support for candidates to show greater levels of support. And that's, uh, that's how they get, we have kind of a, a merit, uh, I wanna say um, uh, metrics process uh, by which we show candidates, we'll list all the candidates, anybody running, but then the, the, we, there's a website, PCSC website that lists candidates, did they fill out a questionnaire? Did they submit a letter? You know, they submit a letter, did they fill out a questionnaire? Do they have a website? Um, if they're to be included in a, a presidential campaign forum, which will be held next year, that's a PCSC will sponsor that next year, then the candidates, in that forum need to show a certain, and it's minimal, but they need to show some support. So signature support, also the amount of funds raised to better show their potential viability and credibility. And so uh, even though any candidate can still run and even potentially win, this tells uh, potential voters and supporters who can, what candidates are running in a credible race and, and worthy of, of more uh, investment. We do have a commitment this time to reach out to all state parties and caucuses regarding presidential preference polls. Uh, the track processes and offer advice and samples if a state party or caucus doesn't have a process in place and then track the delegate count. This was not done last time, I think because of the pandemic, everybody was kind of thrown off. So what happened is the, the candidates were not sure, uh, you know, of course candidates should be reaching out too, but we'd like to have a list of what state parties have a caucus or primary, when it is, how does, how does the candidate participate? What are the results? Um, so this past year, the committee met a few times, uh, reviewed upcoming activities. We plan to start regular meetings um, uh, late summer, early fall, and then again, prepare for a candidate uh, debate or forum next summer at the ENM. Is there any question? And I'll say this, if, I, if these uh, lessons learned and the survey and it haven't been posted yet, um, someone can let me know and I'll make sure they get posted to the national list so you can see. Uh, pretty self-explanatory, but. Okay, thanks, Holly. Um, that was Presidential uh, Campaign Support Committee. Um, is Kirit here? I didn't see him. Kirit Mukherjee, are you here? 
If not, is uh, Mary Sanderson here from Banking Monetary Reform? Eco Mary action. is here. I'm sorry. And I, Mary is here, and I just uh, asked Mary to unmute if she's okay. available. Thank you. Oh, I think you have the wrong person. This is Mary Sanders. Right. But there's a Mary Sanderson on, oh, on, that, I see. on that particular right. committee. Okay. Thank you. Um, Eco Action, Mark Dunley, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Okay, your turn. Mark Dunley is uh, co chair of the Eco Action Committee. Oops. Okay. Um, just trying to get my stopwatch back up, get my six minutes. Um, so Eco Action, you know, has tried to been active over the last year. We submitted a report. Uh, I will say probably our main focus was to um, follow up on the support for what we call eco-socialist uh, Green New Deal, and also to proceed to promote um, the president taking uh, executive orders, uh, issuing executive orders, uh, and also declaring uh, a climate emergency. Um, we held a number of webinars, um, Jill Stein, Howie Hawkins, various other people uh, to promote that idea. We were involved in trying to promote um, for a second year in a row, uh, Earth Day to, to, to May Day. Uh, we helped draft a series of uh, media releases that the uh, GPUS Media Committee eventually um, you know, released on various things around the Green New Deal and, and, and climate change. And we also did a, a call in to Biden, the President Biden national call in and Senator Schumer on May 24th uh, around the Green New Deal um, and uh, executive order climate emergency. And in fact, this Thursday, we're planning uh, to do another similar national call-in day. Uh, lots of groups now are really trying to push um, the climatepresident.org and, and particularly the executive orders. Biden, you know, last week uh, was supposed to do it, but overruled his staff at the last um, moment. Um, we did do a, a webinar on, on green living, how you know people can reflect their green values and green principles and how they do everyday parts of their lives. Uh, we are trying to put together you know, additional resources on that. And I think people are interested in probably exploring a little bit more on that. Um, we have provided uh, talking points for um, candidates, uh, Green Party candidates, um, around eco action issues, particularly, you know, climate change, but uh, other things as, as well. Um, we did promote um, some platform amendments, um, particularly the rights of nature, something uh, that was, um, you know, enacted or initiated by the Eco Action Committee. We also were co-sponsor of the Eco Socialist Green New Deal resolution and Howie Hawkins uh, and various others um, um, generated. One of the things I'll mention, um, I in particular, but some other individuals, particularly uh, David Schwartzman, uh, who's also on the Eco Action Committee, uh, did participate in the um, COP26 um, working group on climate change for, for Global Greens. Um, as I think others have had experience at Global Greens, sort of a mixed uh, experience. Um, lots of nice people that we're dealing with and, you know, had some real good discussions uh, and educating each other about various issues. Um, but Global Greens is much more limited in what they work on and their politics are pretty um, moderate. Uh, and I think that was a problem overall with uh, the other green organizations, nowhere near as strong on, on climate change as the Green Party of the United States is. And that was a real disappointment because they often have a more um, prominent role in their in their in their um, national government. Um, we did eventually uh, get the uh, Global Greens, we the working group, uh, to adopt you know some mission statements about uh, you know various issues around uh, a just transition and paying for global south and you know trying to keep to the one point five degree limit. But to be overall, I thought it was very vague in terms of what it actually called for it was more a statement of values than uh, supporting the specific numbers, which is what COPs are you know, really about. Um, COP26 was not um, at all a success in terms of advancing the climate agenda. And frankly, you know, 
I was relatively new to the International Green Party movement, but you know, the, the Greens did not seem to play any coordinated role at any level um, in, in terms of COP26, despite spending a year, you know, sort of talking about it. Everybody seemed to go, you know, off in the different directions. Mark, Just brief. One minute. One minute. Okay. Um, the, the committee needs more engagement at every level. We need more of our existing members to become active. We need states to appoint people and then help, you know, uh, work them. Um, I'm sure as every committee said, we could use more assistance from the national. Um, we had a committee meeting of the committees, you know, recently people seem to have a lot of interest in doing a joint action together. Uh, hopefully we talked about doing a direct action, hopefully around climate change. We hope that comes about and that's something we'd be very uh, interested in helping to assist with. Thanks, Mark. Um, is, um, Hey, Copanus here from GPAX. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm here. Okay, great. You're next. Um, great. GPAX so that Peace Action Committee. Okay. Um, uh, I'd like to uh, quickly summarize uh, the last 12 months of what GPAX has done and then address a couple of of issues that uh, we think are important and should be shared with uh, the wider uh, green community in this forum. Um, we basically have been active uh, in making, uh, uh, doing some analysis work, making presentations, uh, doing webinars, and uh, endorsing peace-oriented issues. Um, it's my belief, and I think it's shared by the committee, that. Um, the peace issue does not have sufficient prominence within uh, the USGP, but uh, we believe it should because it's the, it's the greatest and most imminent danger to uh, the world. Climate change can uh, injure or, uh, or kill us in 20 years, but uh, nuclear war can, can kill us all in 30 minutes from now. So uh, we have been pressing uh, to make this uh, an issue of greater uh, concern and uh, something that has wider support within the Green Party. And uh, uh, on our GPAX website, we've posted uh, uh, links to webinars. The ones we did in the last year are uh, uh, titled Biden's Wars, the First 100 Days, where we make the point that nothing much had changed in uh, the transition to the new administration. Uh, Nonviolence in a violent world, talking about uh, uh, options for activism to uh, uh, serve the cause of peace. Uh, background and dangers of the Ukraine war, something we did jointly with uh, the Midwestern Green Group. Um, and uh, I think the fact that there is a large scale war in Europe today. Uh, in which the United States has not clearly defined what the limits of its involvement are going to be, is a source of grave concern. Um, also in the background uh, is the, uh, the growing threat of US confrontation with China, which seems to uh, uh, never subside. So uh, in addition to the webinars, uh, we've uh, published a number of articles on our website, and some of them have appeared in other forums. Uh, some of the titles are The Future of Militarism, A Fatal Prognosis, uh, A Couple Statements on the Ukraine Crisis, uh, The US is Stumbling Toward Nuclear War, um, America's Neocons Turn on the Plutocracy, uh, American Embrace of Propaganda in the Ukraine War, and uh, uh, we've had an article published in Counterpunch by one of our members, Ryan Swan, on uh, the vast uh, continuing armed assistance for Ukraine. In addition, um, every year we uh, try to contribute a workshop to um, the uh, annual meeting. Uh, last year it was on uh, Controlling the Menace of High-Tech Weapons, which was a, a comprehensive overview of uh, 
uh, newly developed and fielded weapons that are further destabilizing uh, the world militarily. And uh, this year, we uh, just delivered uh, a, a workshop on um, uh, another aspect of, uh, of the danger, which is uh, the uh, anatomy of militarism, essentially. It's called uh, the anatomy of the blob, and that recording should be available in a, in a week or so. So uh, you have much, of our, much of our work is analysis and information, uh, and we hope that's a resource for the candidates and uh, I think that's enough of a summary. Uh, the two issues I'd like to discuss in addition, which are current concerns, are the, the platform. One of the things we did in the course of uh, the last 18 months is to develop uh, an, a detailed world peace platform, which spans the whole range of current um, conflicts and uh, armed uh, confrontation dangers and lays out what we believe a, a pro-peace foreign policy would be. And the reason this platform is important um, is because we believe it should be incorporated in the GPUS platform, which uh, we believe is uh, not in correspondence with the four pillars. If you look at the founding principles of the Green Party, peace is one of the four pillars, but that component does not currently exist in the platform. There are foreign policy references sprinkled in the other sections, and there are redundant sections on social justice and ecology. And uh, what we've submitted to the platform committee is a recommendation to uh, introduce our peace platform, and that has gone nowhere, basically. So we believe that requires attention. We need to wrap it up with you, but if there's time afterwards, we can have a question. Okay, the last uh, point is uh, currently there's a significant difference of opinion on what the GP policy on Ukraine should be, and uh, we believe that requires further discussion. Um, thanks for the opportunity to uh, review our work. Great. Do we have Mary Sanderson here yet or Howard Switzer? Uh, and let's then go to the uh, coordinated campaign committee with Holly Hart. And then I noticed the curate's on so we can have him afterwards. Holly, you're on. I know I'm trying to get back on. Yeah, and so yeah, actually I wasn't gonna be presenting for all this stuff, but um, uh, the other <laughs> PCSA co-chair um, was, uh, was not able to be active, is active recently. So uh, my term is actually over there, but I went ahead and gave that report anyway. Um, now I just need to get the um, coordinated campaign committee up. I uh, wanna thank everybody who was took part in our um, candidate cafe. That was a, a new idea from one of our new members, Scott Lagenauer, and it seems to have been a hit. The candidates that showed up seem to really enjoy it. Um, others showed up, uh, Greens at large, and uh, uh, at least one member of the media. Hi, actually, we didn't get much media. Actually, we got no media, but we weren't really expecting any this time. So um, we're going to have more of those. But I'll just go over a bit uh, on our report over the past year. We were able to continue most of our usual activities. Uh, we continue to work in virtual settings. Uh, we'd like to do uh, in-person events again, but I think based on recommendations and requests, we will always want to make a virtual uh, aspect to these because we got much wider participation and some very valuable participation from people who could not, not otherwise have been there. Um, committee members have reached out to green campaigns heading into the fall general election. We've worked on updating a candidate list and assisted in providing information through the elections database. And I just wanna mention a couple things. The database has some criteria for inclusion. It's not quite the same as what we're looking for because We'll work with candidates. We want to know any candidate running, whether they're on the ballot yet or not. And some candidates don't even file until the last minute. So, so if uh, if if there's a candidate running, they may not be in the database, but we want it. We want to know about them. The other thing is, um, and if I can find it, I'm going to try to post this here. But I have a list of states where we have uh, liaisons. A coordinated campaign committee works with uh, state liaisons. We rely on a contact uh, in each state party to report news of candidates and campaigns. Most have one or two, but some have not. And I, I confess I fell behind on this. 
uh, but it's really important. This is one of the most important things you can do in your state to have at least one person tracking candidates because we rely on you to tell us this person is running for school board, this person is running for Senate. Um, <coughs> and uh, we have a, we well, hope to have a complete update soon, I promise. And uh, we also have a list of criteria we follow, but just even knowing about a candidate is critical. And if you're not sure whether your state party has a liaison, please contact us at ccc at gp.org. That is ccc at gp.org. Um, and I will say too, for some, many states have liaisons, but we, we still continue to find out by you know, um, osmosis about other candidates, about candidates in your state. Don't hesitate to contact us. There's an email list for those liaisons that are on there, very low traffic, so people forget about it. But don't hesitate to post there or directly to us if, if somebody is running in your state. Um, we had elections, one of the newest uh, things, we had several new members after a couple of years of not having elections, uh, several new members are listed below in the, uh, in the report. So we have some new voices, a lot of enthusiasm and expertise. So uh, we continue to discuss electoral strategy, assisting states also with creating each state, we hope to have a meeting with each state to create their own elections toolboxes so that each state can figure out what their strengths are, weaknesses, what their challenges are and opportunities kind of a standard toolbox or toolkit, but uh, every state is different. There are 50 different elections systems. Uh, people talk about ballot access a lot, uh, but down ticket ask, uh, races don't have the same challenges usually. So, um, and that's where we win and that's where we make policy. So, so uh, we, we, the, the next, one of the next projects is reaching out state by state. We've had a couple of states express interest already. So we hope to get to doing that. Um, we also sent an e-blast to office holders. And that was a while ago. We got, uh, we, we hope to do more with that. We'd like to see how they're working in regards to the Green New Deal. Uh, several have indicated they're willing to be part of an online interview or panel, and we hope to do that sometime in the near future. Uh, we continued our series of monthly webinars, which incorporate experience and advice on all aspects of running for office. We have, uh, we include candidates, elected office holders, and other campaign workers. Attendance is varied, but it's been pretty good. We do mostly outreach via Facebook and via media, which helps promote and, and uh, publicize these things. And also sessions and slide decks are available for most sections, along with other resources at gpus.org backslash ccc. Um, I'll post that in the chat. Um, one potential project going forward will be to find a video editor and kind of polish up and make it more of a, of a, a table of contents for our webinars and other archives. So we also plan we'll be doing um, Last year, we contacted all the candidates that we could and invited them to share a one to two minute video. They were used during the national meeting and elsewhere. And we had two Green Wave candidate showcases. These are live stream events that are held leading into the general election. They feature short candidate videos and then interviews with three or four other candidates, like the candidates to watch when they win or when they get some national attention or something. We plan to arrange two or three more of these. And uh, let's see, we are promoted on a party on a website and social media. <laughs> we also, um, Greenways are promoted, they offer chapters also a hook to help publicize the work. Um, as you know, we invited the candidates uh, this year to the Candidate Cafe virtual meet and greet, and that seemed to go uh, well. A lot of people who showed up really seemed to like it. Last year, we offered some very small campaign grants based on a competitive basis to people who wanted to apply for candidates. Uh, we raised about $3,000. We don't expect to, uh, to have that money this time, but I think it's more important that we teach people or train people to know how to fundraise because that's really where they're gonna make the needed campaign money anyway. Um, continuing goals, strategy roadmap and task lists, uh, work with elections, data tracking, help organize volunteers and collect campaigns. And uh, there may be interest in having a continuation of a few more cafes and, and that sort of thing. So if there are any questions, um, I'm gonna put our, our contact info in the address list here and um, We'll have a few qu minutes for questions after everyone's gone. Okay. And yeah, that you can find out we have we have a bunch of uh, uh, documents and stuff, and some are older, but they're also quite relevant. So, so any, anything you want to know about us, you can find on that page. Thank you. Okay, um, Kirit Mukherjee is going to give a report for the Presidential I Support Committee, uh, a survey report. Absolutely. So uh, the uh, Presidential Campaign Support Committee that's kind of in between presidential cycles. So what we did is we did a survey after the last uh, presidential 
campaign and the, the six questions I'm going to talk about and the results of the survey and how they can inform what we're going to do uh, next time. Did the presidential campaign benefit your state party? Uh, the results were mixed. The people who said no said that the actually Howie Hawkins campaign was perhaps not in touch with their state, their state issues, but other states said yes, the visibility did help their local candidates. So the summary from the different comments, I don't know, it's unanimous, so I, don't, I, mean, uh, I don't know who the commenters are, but was that uh, some states felt party infighting and divisions uh, didn't, help, uh, didn't help on the presidential campaign. The second question was challenges to uh, the state parties for ballot access and obviously the pandemic. Someone needs to mute. Lack of media attention were seen as main obstacles. Uh, and obviously we'll see what happens. Uh, the situation may be completely different in two years. The third question was should fundraising threshold be raised as currently is $5,000. Most of the answers were yes, it should be raised, uh, that $5,000 is too little to run a presidential campaign. So PCSC is gonna have to discuss that uh, for this next cycle. Fourth question was how can we get candidates to campaign in your state, Zoom or in person? But obviously there's a response or a mix of that in two years from now. Uh, who knows whether Zoom is going to be, gonna be uh, required, but at the moment, a lot of states said they would like Zoom as an option. Question five was, did candidates explain their platform sufficiently? Most of the responses said Howie Hawkins and Dario Hunter were the only uh, candidates who sufficiently explained their, their platform. Final question was how can state parties get more participation in, in their primary process here? There were a lot of detailed responses, but here a lot of states said they want the national party to assist in terms of media, phone banking, and the technology to reach out the information that every state has a different uh, primary process as we know. And here, actually, people said they want the National Party to be more involved. So that's something we're going to have to work on because obviously states tend to do things their own way. So it's interesting that you know they want assistance here. So we're, we're going to we're going to have that I have a lot of discussions on that. And that is a summary of the survey. There were forty people that. Participated in that. I believe we do have the uh, results of that in printed form. But I'll have to take a look. Um, okay. Um, Rita Jacobs is going to present for the Banking and Monetary Reform Committee. Rita. Yeah. Thank you, Tamar. Um, I'll. I. I won't make this very long. So um, our, our committee was formally recognized about uh, three years ago. And um, we have been meeting almost uh, weekly ever since then and before that actually. Um, and uh, we discuss many of the issues relating to the economy and what's going on with the Federal Reserve and so forth. And um, we also uh, discuss things that are com coming up in the future regarding our money and currency and so forth. Um, our primary issue, mission is to educate the members about the monetary system and how it, uh, it gives vast uh, privilege and um, power to the bankers. And the bankers have amassed such a fortune from these subsidies that they are basically in control of most of the uh, largest corporations uh, and also um, the government through lobbying and campaign contributions. 
and uh, their power is overlooked. And basically, it's going to be very difficult to do anything about climate change or uh, stopping this military spending and all that with this system in place. Um, and you, you see that the government is doing very little on the most important issues. And, um, and that's because everything is profit motivated. Um, we have a, a monthly newsletter and um, you can sign up for that uh, and uh, on our website, actually. Um, our website is greensformonetaryreform.org. I can put that in the chat for you after I get done here. One of the big issues um, that is coming up is the central bank digital currency. If any of you have been uh, reading about that, we um, have been discussing that quite a bit. It's going to be a very important upcoming issue. And we are totally against this concept because it would give the the central bank, the Federal Reserve, which is a private uh, banking organization, would give them too much uh, control over our privacy and our spending and so on. Um, anyway, there will be more about that in the future. So um, I, <clears throat> we are always available to give presentations to any state parties or locals that would be interested. Um, and all you need to do is uh, you know, message us through our, um, our co-chairs mainly. And um, we've done several presentations to smaller groups and so forth, and we would like to continue to do that. So th that's mainly all I need to say here, so. Thank you, uh, Rita. And um, Hillary is driving, so she can't present the treasurer's report, but it is very thorough and in the speak under the speakers, um, you'll find it. And uh, the treasurer gives a report every month to the national committee. Um, so you can see it there. You see, it, hers is a combination of a lot of reports from the past few years. Um, do we have any questions for the committees that have spoken? Uh, I think, um, any questions? Oh, Margaret, Donna, I'm sorry. Yeah, we have hands up from Margaret Elizabeth, Christopher Vanderwald Brown, and Rachel Bratton. Okay, got it. I was looking in the chat. Uh, would you like Margaret Elizabeth to start? Margaret Elizabeth, yes. Um, okay, so thank you first off to the panelists for being here and presenting the A&M report about the subcommittees. This is really great. I know that a lot of Greens, you know, like me, well, maybe not exactly like me, but a lot of Greens don't really know what the committees do and it's sort of, you know, like at the national level. And most of us are engaged at the state level. So this is really awesome explaining all the different stuff the national party has been doing. So I have two questions which are related um, and they go mostly towards um, the presidential candidate selection. So as we all know, there was a lowering of the requirement for qualification for presidential candidates back in uh, 2020, which caused a lot of friction. And the current uh, uh, PCSE is looking at raising the requirement back to where it used to be in 2016. We lowered it from 2016 uh, in 2020. And so the idea is to take it back to 2016. So my question is, in a general sense, uh, to the PCSC is what is your uh, where's your a take on where that is where the process is in getting us back to that to that level are we close do we need more work in the committee is it just a matter of like a vote somewhere uh, thank you um, since that's requires the director response I'm going to go back to Holly yeah thank you um, I think it's pretty close um, I think it should not be I, I will mention one thing um, that when we say qualify any of these people can qualify and we don't, there was some concern about people misunderstanding what we meant about qualifications or certified in this stuff. But, but yeah, um, I think this was, I don't, I didn't see any, um, uh, I'm personally, I'm used to having every wingnut on the planet 
in a caucus. So, but I think the rest of the committee was uh, was unanimous on this. And I, I think it was just a matter of the committee. Uh, we've been trying to schedule some regular meetings. And I think once we do with it, that's, that's next on the docket and we'll come out with that. It may require national committee approval, but that should be coming out in the near future. Oh. Comments from the chat is okay. Tom, I see Christopher, Rachel, Randy, and then Craig. Christopher, if I can. Okay. Thank you. Um, I have a question uh, for the uh, peace uh, committee that's been trying to, or that's been putting stuff forward or whatnot. Um, I was wondering if one wants to get in touch or, or to be um, help out any anyway. Um, in the event, who the contact people are, who would be the, the folks to get in touch with for that? Hey, I'm going to go, and then we'll go to the I'm uh, uh, typing my email into the chat. Okay. Okay, he's typing it in for you, uh, Christopher. So we're going to go to Rachel. And uh, I should note that we welcome observers attending our meetings and uh, We'll provide information on our meeting schedule uh, in this email to Christopher. Um, my question is similar. Um, I'm interested in the Eco Action Committee. Um, one of the things I'm confused about is I, I think I heard something about my state has to nominate me to be a member of it. Um, so I'd like to, that to be clarified as well. I'll direct response to that because I was going to mention that at the end of the call. Um, if you want to be on a committee, you need to get your state to approve you. Uh, and, and so you just, you go to them, there can be three people on each committee, except for there are a couple of committees where people are elected, the coordinated campaign committee and the finance committee. Uh, and uh, some, uh, you could be an observer on some of the committees for now. And then as you're trying to get get approval from your state because some states don't meet but every couple of months or every or once a year um, other questions on that or your caucus if you're in a caucus you could be a representative assuming they don't have three already i'm sorry it's still not clear to me what steps i need to take in order to get on there what what's the first thing i should do can you so tell me your that? state to be appointed so i um is it like Minnesota Green Party, maybe? So you must not be involved in your state party. No, I'm new. This is but the first time I've done anything official. Great. Green good, party. good. Um, so I would, uh, yes, I would look up, we can send you the contact for, for Minnesota. We'll send them to you. Okay, thank um, you. I, let, me, let me make sure I've got your email. I'll get somebody to send you the contacts for, for Minnesota. Okay, thanks. Okay. And next is Randy Hicks. I'm from Sacramento, and I and um, I'm wanted to join the nuclear. I want to join the nuclear free party because I belong to nuclear free organizations such as the Women's League and International Peace and Freedom, which is an anti nuclear organization. How has it been going with the Green Party to reach out to other organizations that have been to kind of work on similar issues as us? Also, Extinction Rebellion. I've been working with them. On the, on the planet and the, on the peace and justice issue, especially about our planet. And I wanted to join that. I wanted to join the one about uh, peace, peace and freedom about a war. Uh, do we have a talk, do we have any committee on that to talk about war like the war in Ukraine and all the other wars that the United States seems to be getting into? That would be so, peace, peace action committee. Um, want to respond? Uh, yes, briefly, uh, to your first point, we um, try to coordinate with other um, anti-war and anti-nuclear uh, danger groups, but um, uh, the problem in the U.S. peace movement is it tends to focus on epi episodic cooperation. In other words, someone sets a date. For example, we have the anniversary of the Hiroshima bombing coming up uh, in early August, and there'll be actions around the country. But um, what's really required is persistent alliance. In other words, a, a formal mechanism of coordination 
that's year round so that when major initiatives are undertaken, there's a framework of communication. And that hasn't gelled yet. We um, talked, I just wanted to tell you that um, I'm on the, I'm with the International League of Peace, Women's International League of Peace and Freedom. And we, we're always, we call it our building up and our, and our reach and our outreach meeting that we have on Thursday. Um, I always say I'm with the Green Party because we're seeming to be the one who on peace. Anyway, um, they said that we should reach out to them somehow. And I just want to know who would I contact uh, nationally? Sacramento, we already have somebody here. That's me. But I want to know who internationally would want to reach out to, win, to Women's International League of Peace and Freedom because they have a phone call every Thursday, every other Thursday, where we talk. About I think that would be Haig to reach out to him directly. I put the address in in the chat again. Great. Uh, Craig, Craig, you're on. Thanks, everyone. So this is a great opportunity. We have new people that are just joining the party because they hear about the AM and they're coming nationally and now they need to be directed properly to their channels, to the state parties, to the committees, to the caucuses. Can they be in a committee? This is a great webinar. I think post a and a quick one that we can actually all agree on and get out there. We need more webinars. How to join a committee. List all the committees. List all the committees that haven't presented today. A lot of the committees that are kind of just like, even in the background doing a lot of the, the functions of the party. Uh, I have a lot of friends that would love the Animal Rights Committee and honestly would get in board if they can actually have a webinar, which I can direct them to, so people can talk about pitching the committees too. That in turn builds the party to the state level because they have to get involved with their state. So we, we need to utilize our tools while we, while we have a chance. And I think we need to continue doing webinars. I applaud all the, the, the eco action, the peace action committees for constantly putting webinars out there and all the other uh, committees, obviously, uh, according to the campaign committee, but we need to utilize all this web, but we're still doing a lot of web-based stuff. Let's do it. Let's try to build, uh, like I said earlier, with the caucus stuff too. I want better landing pages with the committees on their website. I think we need to break it out on the GPUS website where you can take, uh, you know, you can have actions and committees as one subcategory. And then in there, list all the committees. Right now under that, I just see eco action and I see peace action. And yes, they should they should all be labeled. And if they're not active and need members, then what you do is you put a landing page and you can grab the data there and then have that data funneled down to the states as, it's, as it needs to be done. So same thing, like I said in the last panel for the caucuses, I wanna see all that. I would love to see a, a better sub categorization on the website so we can capture the data and information of these people and get them directed properly. Over. Um, thanks, Craig. Um, all the committees are listed on the website. You're right, they may not be categorized very well, and we can work on that. And the steering committee was holding a quarterly call for any national delegate um, back about a year ago, but we've had staffing cuts and that kind of thing. So maybe we can go back to that um, call and do the first one on committees. Christopher, and then I think we're almost going to wrap it up. Christopher. Thank you. Um, I actually wanted to uh, boost a quote uh, off of uh, Camilla's. Uh, um, basically, it, it, for uh, new committees, uh, she had mentioned, um, I believe, uh, um, uh, one for membership and, and things of that nature. Um, and outreach. Just wondering uh, what uh, would be required or how would one uh, uh, go about trying to help the creation or founding of new committees that aren't currently in existence? I'm sorry, they would need a proposal um, uh, to be a, a standing committee of the uh, national committee. Um, there are also networking kinds of groups that, that we could have that aren't necessarily official. Um, but uh, other than that, that's that's the way a committee gets. Uh, it, we have an official committee. Um, some of the committees are not really active, so maybe uh, looking at some of those um, 
and, and we could substitute. We can, we can begin to, to get some other commitments. Um, but right now, if you need to know how to get involved, email office at gp.org and Athena will direct you to the right place for whatever your interest is. Yes, money, 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 money. Um, so I don't have any final thoughts. Um, I think that can wrap it up so it gives us a few minutes before the next session. Can I ask a question? I just sure. wanted to ask a question. I just wanted to ask a question. Sure. When you overhaul the website, I kind of like, if you guys are going to do that, um, I'd like to, to uh, work with you on that, especially on the disability access issues, um, you know, on, you know, just see if it's screen reader friendly. And, uh, you know, if you, if you have a, if you might have a website where they can all, it could be all text and not necessarily so much graphics, but more text and graphics. People with visual impairments, they have a real difficult time um, using the screen reader with a lot of graphics, a lot of small print and a lot of small lines. So I, I just wanna let you know that if you need any help with that, let us know because our organization, California's Disability Rights, that's nothing, that's the main thing we do is make sure that things are accessible. That's great. Um, and if you'll send your information yeah, I put my I put my email in the chat. So send me any information you had about working on your website. Okay, great. Okay, I think we can wrap it up. Oh yeah, good to reach. And then the next session is um, the elections database. We have a few minutes that way. <laughs> <laughs>